So, do you just want me to start from the very beginning and just kind of give you like just like uh, an overview of it, kind of? Yeah, give us like a, an overview, and I got a ton of questions I want to ask because I've I've did my homework, but okay. you know, so, so when people watch it, they got like you know the basic idea. Okay, gotcha. Um, so. Late uh, Wednesday night, um, August 8th of 2018, um, her dad and I got into a disagreement over at his mom's house. There was an argument that ensued. Um, I left with my son, who didn't doesn't belong to him biologically, and he stayed behind with my daughter. And then he eventually came back home. I was slept on the couch that night. He was in the bedroom with her. The next morning, I poked my head in on them. He was asleep. She was asleep in the bed. It was about 7.20, 7.25 probably um, in the morning. Um, you you so seen I, her in the bed with him that morning? I did, yes. Okay. Yes, I, I always check on my kids in the morning before I leave for work. Um, that's just something I did. And um, so I did see her, yes, um, and she was fine. I didn't see anything you know, immediately wrong or anything like that. Um, right. So I went to work and then around noon is when I started getting calls and texts that were emergency, 911, um, you need to come home, you know, yeah, yeah, whatever. And then me, I got, you know, dirt, I left work, went to the hospital. We got a boatload of information that she had the subdural hematoma. She had stopped breathing at the babysitter's, um, lost a heartbeat at the babysitter's house. Um, they called the babysitter called 911 and they rushed her to the hospital and then eventually they said there's nothing we could do for her here at the small town hospital that we have. Um, so they flew her out to Riley and then she died um, from a, a brain stroke. She had three strokes, I believe, two in the front, one in the back, or maybe vice versa. I'd have to look at the autopsy, but um, a stroke that caused her to basically internally bleed in her brain and, and she died then. Um, and then that's pretty much it. I mean, that was just the, the basic lineup of what happened during those three days, um, up until she died. And, uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty much it for as far as the gist of the story is. Okay. And at, at, at first, did, what, what did they assume happened? So and by they, who, who do you mean specifically? Well, like... I don't know because I'm kind of confused about the part where. Well, let's let's go back. Let's go back. He he, her dad said mm -hmm. when he dropped her off at the babysitter, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the last time you seen her was that morning. She was in bed with him, right? And then he gets he gets uh, I guess he gets up, he gets her and your little boy ready, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And takes. Takes Gabriella to the babysitter. That's where she was when nine one one happened. When she, the babysitter noticed she wasn't conscious, right? Yes. Okay. So, so when 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 she's sent to the emergency room, right? When she goes into the emergency room, what? I, I guess I guess she was just reported as, as not conscious. Is, is what the babysitter did? She called it in as that she could. There, she was unresponsive. So actually, I, I'm not 100% sure. Um, okay. The I, I don't have a copy of the 911 call. I know it exists, and I know it is in the file that they refuse to give me. Um, okay. But I, I haven't actually heard it for myself. I have heard from multiple different um, the investigators and so who else? To, the coroner um, told me that it did sound like she was responding in a way that made him made them believe that um ella was completely unresponsive as far as like not breathing and no heartbeat she said that she was well and i'm sorry in the um i have the there's a report from the i went to the fire chief here in my town and he gave me a report i can't remember what it's called now for the life of me but he gave me a report and in the report they reported specifically that Infant child laying on ground, bluish gray in color, soaking wet. No heartbeat, no breath. Really? Yes. Yep. It's almost verbatim. What? Like I'd have to find the the paperwork. But yes, she. That's what they said. That she was blue in color, no heartbeat, and no breath. Full cardiac arrest. Exactly is what it said. Have you have you spoken to the babysitter at all since it no. happened? No. Nothing. She, she has not responded to me in any way, shape, or form. I did try to call her. 
um, when we got to Riley Hospital downtown, downtown Indianapolis, sorry, I forgot you're not from Indiana. Um, yeah. When we got there to Riley, I did call her and she forwarded me to voicemail. And then the, when the police came, the police told me that she probably wouldn't answer me, that um, she was in a very uh, chaotic state of mind where she was just kind of like out of her mind. So she probably would not answer me. Um, I did try maybe like a maybe like a day or two after I tried to text her and say, hey, tell me what happened. Um, you know, what was the day like? I don't understand. And then just no response at all. Just zero response. Was the babysitter underage? No, she was not. Mm -mm. Okay. I, 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 like, I, I got people helping me look look at it. And they're telling me, I can't remember what it is. So I'm not going to say 100%. But they seen mm -hmm. something and her name's redacted in it. And I yeah. thought, yeah, I thought that might be because... Um, she was underage, but she's not. No, it's probably because she has about three attorneys um, yeah. that, she, that are on her payroll that she just keeps. Well, was it, what was the, the daycare situation? Was it like her home at a day? I mean, what was that? Yes. Yeah, so it was just a in-home daycare, um, which here in the state of Indiana, you could only have five children that are not blood relation to you. Um, in the home before you have to get a license after that you know six or more you have to have a license so uh -huh. I believe that with my two with Ella and my son um, I believe they were number four and five so I think that was her max capacity um, right. if I remember correctly it has a lot of years ago um, so yeah it was just an in-home daycare she it was a very beautiful home we really liked her it was very, very nice, um, right. and it's it's so funny because that Wednesday, um, her dad and I had met at the sitter's house, just out of the blue, random, just happened to show up at the same time. I don't remember why um, we showed up at the same time, but we were there, and I was talking to her. We were just having a conversation, and I was like, you know, uh, if somebody ever hurt my kids, you know, because I think I had seen something about a baby dying at the hands of a babysitter or something, and I was like... You know, if anybody ever hurt my kids, they wouldn't have to worry about the police. They'd have to worry about me. And right. then, then the next day, the next day, that happens to my child while in her care. So then I was like, that is unbelievable to me. And that just struck me as one of those things that when they were trying to tell me that it was her, you know, her dad and his mom, when they were like, oh, it's the babysitter. Oh, it was the babysitter. You know, I right. was like, um... I really just like basically threatened her within an inch of her life. <laughs> like, I don't think that she, she did that, but yeah, there for a short while, they kind of had me believing that it was her, but yeah, over time that, that changed. How long had she been the babysitter? Uh, my kid, that was the day number four for my kids. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's odd to me that a babysitter has that kind of lawyers or, you know, it, that seemed odd to me. Mm. So my understanding of the situation with her, which I don't know much, they don't, the, the police really haven't told me a whole lot about it, but I do know that after the incident with Ella, the DCS, which is our Department of Child Services here in Indiana, they um, basically came and just started harassing her and was threatening to take her own child away from her. Um, much like they did to me, they came and took my son from me. Um, right. For four months after Ella died, so I had neither of my children in in my care. Obviously, Ella, you know, has was passed away, but uh, my son, at the time, he was he was removed from my care. And then I guess DCS was threatening to take her child away. And I guess when they came to interview her that day, um, she was drinking a beer. She had a beer in her hand when they showed up, and that caused them to like be you know freak out on her and they wanted to give her a drug test and she refused and they were like oh well, we're gonna take your child then and she was like no you're not so she lawyered up i think it was mainly right. more about dcs and protecting her from getting her child taken away versus protecting her from any kind of p p damage from the police or anything right. like that it was more to protect herself from from getting her children taken away. God, that's awful. I didn't realize they took your son after that. Mm, yes, they did. Yeah, for four months. Mm -hmm. I got it right, right before Christmas. Was it right following that? Uh, like, it, like it, when did when did they take him? Uh, the next day. Wow. 
Yeah. So you haven't spoke to the babysitter, and that's why. And I would really love to know is if if she corroborates what um, dad is what we'll refer to him as is what dad said about he told her about falling off the bed because that's what he says right he says he told the babysitter when he dropped ella off that she fell off the bed right yes um if i remember correctly she did tell the police that she did in her interview she did because she she did do one interview on camera with the first detective that was on ella's case um and if i remember correctly in that first interview she did say that he told her hey she fell off the bed keep an eye on her she was fine she seemed fine when i got her you know i she was crying and you know i i calmed her down and she was okay or whatever and she said okay no problem i'll keep an eye on her and then in the same breath said but she wasn't okay told that detective no she was sluggish she was sleepy she wouldn't eat she only ate about half a bottle and all she wanted to do was sleep right. i also know um that she described the story as Ella had just woken up from a nap and she picked her up out of the pack and play. She had her sleeping in like a little pack and play thing. And um, she picked her up and she took her in the kitchen and she put her on the floor with some toys and stuff. And she started making lunch and she was turning around and putting the pizza in the oven. And when she turned back around, she said that Ella was kind of like slumped in the floor with her head down. And that's when she noticed that she wasn't breathing and that didn't seem right to her. Um, and that's when she started to panic and she took her in the bathroom, threw some, threw some cold water on her um, to try to wake her up, try to get her jolted. And then um, when that didn't work, that's when she called 911. That was in her interview? Yes. Yeah, that's in a, that's in a video recorded interview, I believe. So, so now I've seen the, the autopsy. The auto, autopsy, autopsy says homicide, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... What, do you get a feeling from the police, that, you know, from the, what you have spoke to them, what they think? Um, as far as what happened to her? Yeah. Uh, just that they, no, not really. Um, actually, not really. Um, now, the doctors or believe... a person of interest? No, I mean, I wouldn't even go that far. I'm not, nobody, nobody's really said outright, flat out what they think or what they believe, except for the doctors. Um just from what i've been told as far as you know the autopsy different interviews and things like that i do believe that i i kind of believe that maybe he th might have thrown her that might have been something that was the case there as far as um how she sustained the injuries um, right. and then as far as being intentional i don't know for sure that it was intentional even the police don't believe it was intentional they just believe that at this point he's lied about it so much um, that there's no there's no coming back from it now. Like maybe if you had told the truth in the beginning, uh, we might have gone a different route with this. But at this point, right. you lied, so now you look guilty just on the basis of that you lied. Right. Then what did the doc the doctor said? It, it didn't look like it was the result of falling off the bed, though. Right? Did they That's think correct. that it was a possibility? uh no no from the jump everybody said there's no way that these injuries were conducive um to just falling off the bed they measured my bed at the time as being a foot and a half off the floor um, I read that. And, and that's just not something that they believe was a possibility i mean babies are resilient they're born uh with flexibility they're born with resistant to bone breakage it's very hard to break baby's bones um, and then not heal properly or quickly. Babies heal especially quickly. So um, I've done a lot of research over the years about you know cases where kids have fallen off the bed um, and survived. I mean, I fell out of a grocery cart in the Kmart parking lot on concrete and hit the top of my head, and here I am, 31 years old, right, alive and well. So it seems it seems so unlikely to me i've had three kids i, I my little boy actually fell off the couch one time when mm -hmm. he was pretty little and nothing happened to him i just like i'm no doctor but when i read the autopsy report the way it describes it it seems like an awful serious injury for falling off a bed especially what was it a foot and a half yes yeah was there didn't the autopsy report say something about a bruise somewhere too though 
Um, she, she did have like a, a horizontal bruise across her thigh. Um, it did. They said it looked like a, somebody had like whacked her with like a pencil or something that was real thin, um, and it just was like a like a almost like a whacking mark. Um, somebody did say at one point that they thought maybe um, the seatbelt because she was lifelined in a helicopter. So they thought maybe at some point the seatbelt uh, across her leg might have caused the bruising. However, right. it was only on one leg. So you would think that if that was the case where the seatbelt caused the bruising, that it would be both legs, it would be linear to each other, and you would see them, you know, evenly across both legs. So I'm not right. really sure. Um, that's just my deduction as far as a uh, I just mean person. <laughs> Right, I, I just seen where they mentioned it in the autopsy report, and um, mm. I, I was just wondering if there was any any significance to it. I thought, you know, because there's not a lot in there uh, as as far as um, visual abnormalities, I guess is is what I would say. And yes. uh, I thought, you know, since they mentioned it, maybe there was something to it. I didn't. Know. Yeah, I'm not really sure um, where it came from or how it got there. Like I said, it was just one of those things that they mentioned it in passing at some point and i did read it um in the autopsy but as far as any other kinds of bruising or anything like that in fact they said that um she was well taken care of and you know there was yeah. nothing remarkable about anything you know this was just like a weird incident that happened because <laughs> her she was well cared for and very 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 loved so right I'm not really sure where the bruise came from, but I did I did see it, especially uh, when I was changing her diaper. Um, I changed her diaper in the hospital, and I noticed it, and I did ask the nurse, and she was like, I have no idea where that could have come from. Um, but they did mark, I mean, obviously they wrote it down, and then the bruise stayed up until she was, you know, in the coroner's office and, and doing the autopsy, and they saw it on her as well. Well, so the, well, the timing probably lines up with the fall, kind of then, don't it? Um, it could, but I'm not, I guess I just don't know what, what would have caused it. I don't know right. if that was like, I don't know. <laughs> I couldn't even think of what would have caused something, what, what object would have caused a bruise like that. I mean, it was very, very thin. Like, like I said, like a, maybe like a pencil or, um, you know, something thin and narrow and skinny like that. I just don't know what it could have been. There's nothing what, I can think of. What part of the head was the injury? Where at? Um, on the right side. So on the right side in the middle right here. Um, it was called a subdural, which I believe is what's right inside the skull on the brain on the right side. Right. Was there a knot? I don't, I don't think there was. In fact, I don't think that just by looking at her, um, that you could tell that anything had physically happened to her. I think it was all on the inside. Right. There were well, some. I think there was some bruising on, um, on her scalp, you know, area underneath her hair, but you really couldn't see it uh, unless you were looking for it. She was all bandaged up by tape and, and wires and stuff. So unless you were really looking for it, you wouldn't have seen that. I, I think what draws the suspicion, if you, you know. It almost sounds like it could have just been an honest, simple accident. But I think what draws the suspicion is the the change of the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's multiple. So much. It's multiple stories. I mean, I can I, I can't even remember them all. That's how many there are. Um, well, it started with falling off the bed, changing the diaper. Was that the original story? Uh, I believe that is the one he told me, yes, because I remember um, being so mad at him. Like, she just started rolling. She is eight months old. You know she's rolling over. You know she's learning how to do these things by herself now. Um, you know, what possessed you to be so stupid um, that you would leave her on the bed, uh, not to mention the fact that you claim that you went to go get diapers that were in the living room, but when I saw the, the crime scene photos of my home, you can see clear as day that there are diapers in the pack and play right next to the bed where she slept. What you doing going in the living room to get diapers for? What are you talking about? They're right there behind you. Turn around and grab one. I don't, that was just a weird part of the story as well. 
And that, that was the first story. That was the first story, yes. Okay. It was was the second story the he woke up to her making noise and she was wedged between the bed? Yes. The the bed, the wall and the mattress, yes. yes. Okay, now when did when did this the story switch at the polygraph? He had a polygraph, right? Yes. Yes. Is that when the story switched? Uh, yes. In fact, he changed it um, on the way to the polygraph. The detective at the time picked him up, um, I guess from here, from here in Shelbyville, I don't know, and then drove him downtown uh, to get this polygraph. And on the way there, um, in a car ride on the way there, that's when he said, you know, I have to tell you something. And, and of course... You know, the detective is like, okay, here, here we go. We're about to get, like, a confession before we even need one, you know. And right. um, he, he said what really happened was that she got stuck between the wall and the mattress of our bed, which at the time did not have a headboard or anything. It was just a, a metal frame. Um, and so he was like, well, that's, you know, that's an interesting story change. What? Why are you changing your story um, as far as, you know what happened to her and he didn't really have an explanation he just said i thought it would i would look bad because i was asleep well nobody cares that you're asleep right you know so it is just like okay parents sleep all all, all the time with their babies in the bed so what you well, know you saying that it would make you look bad that's just bull <laughs> well i mean it would have been early morning too that this would have happened right um, yes, yes. So, I mean, um, you, you're not going to look bad early in the morning being asleep, you know? I mean, that that's... See, that's why it's fishy as hell to me is change the, the story change. You would think, and this is my thinking, I haven't been through it, but in my opinion, if something like this happened, when you tell the story, you're going to tell what happened if... There's no reason to lie. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And even one of those stories, there's no reason to lie. No. In my opinion. I, I don't I don't know if she, if she rolled off the bed. I mean, damn it. Yeah, you probably shouldn't have let that happen, but it happened. You tell it, and, you know, it is what it is. It's so odd to change the story if it was an accident. I, it's yeah. just so, so suspicious. It is. The whole thing is just strange to me. Um, there's multiple different things, too, over the years that have kind of come out that I'm like, mm, okay. That's weird. Well, it's a weird thing to do. It's a weird thing to say. It's a well, weird thing to do out in public. The And, and you know, um, the, his history doesn't... It, it's it's, it's kind of shady. It's checkered at best, let's say that. Um it's suspicious, you know. It really is. Yes, it's he's got a very colorful past for sure, and and he is he's always been a very shady person. Uh, yeah. You know, and always always the liar, always the manipulator, always the narcissist. Right, right. What was what was? Have, have you heard another story besides the the two I I was talking about? Um. So if, if we asked him, if we asked him today, what would he tell us? Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I don't know what he would say. Um, What's his story to you? As far the, the the second one, the second one that he has told me and then since stuck by is the one where she rolled up the bed and got stuck between the wall and the mattress, and he scooped her up. I don't know what that means, but he scooped her up and consoled her, and she vomited, um, and then that's when he was like. You know, oh, it's okay. And he got her calmed down. He said she only cried for a few minutes. And that was the end of it. I didn't even know that she had vomited until after the polygraph situation. And I was like, um, I said, did you, did you, did he, did she vomit? And he was like, yeah, she spit up. She spit up a little bit. And I said, hmm, that's odd that you wouldn't have told me that because you didn't tell me that before. But of course, I wasn't the first person to know that anything had happened to my daughter. Um, you know, every Tom, Dick, and Harry in the book knew before i did i didn't know until noon when this incident took place it's at that point it had been almost five hours until i found out that my daughter had gotten hurt at all to begin with it was right. you know 12 o'clock 10 after 12 
and now I'm getting phone calls and now you're telling me that she fell off the bed? If you would have told me that she had fallen off the bed at 737 when you asked Alexa what time it was and you, she said it's 737, if you would have called me right then and there, then guess what? I would have said, oh, she needs to go to the hospital. And I would have turned around and I would have gone and met you at the hospital and made sure she was okay. But no, none of that happened. None of that happened. I got it. I got it. Let's call my mom. Oh, let's call my boss. Why? For what? What was the purpose of that? Because you're mad at me from the night before? Get over it. He called all those people that that morning before he called you? Yes. He had a 15-minute conversation. If I remember correctly, I want to say it was 15 to 20-minute conversation with his mother before he ever called me. The only time I heard from him was at noon when I found out that she was going to the hospital. So did the did the babysitter call him? Uh, yes. I think she tried to get a hold of him and he missed the call and then he called her right back. And that's when she was like, um, I had to call 911. She's going to the hospital. Okay. And then he, he was like, what happened? What happened? And um, Or maybe he had texted her. Maybe he had texted her and said, hey, how's the baby or something. And then she immediately called him. It was something along those lines. There was a phone call made to him from her. And he said, she said, uh, you know, Elle was going to the hospital. And he said, what, what happened? And she, that was, that was pretty much the end of that. I would have been more suspicious of the babysitter had, you know, he not told the story that she'd fell before he, she went to the babysitter. I think you got to think whatever her injury was, regardless, happened with him, right? Yes, yes. So, I mean, it, it, it looks bad on him. It just always, everything comes back to him, I think. And he okay. did it to himself when he lied because that just makes you look so suspicious. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. Over the years, it's just one thing after another. People are messaging me, telling me this, telling me that, that he's done, that they've seen him do in public, or that he said behind closed doors to other people that he doesn't think talk to me. But the thing is, Everybody that knows me and knows him knows that he's guilty of something. So they all come to me. Everybody comes to me and they're like, Shelby, he's done this. Shelby, he's done that. And, you know, it's gotten to a point now where I'm like, unless he comes out and says, I killed my daughter, <laughs> I don't care. Because nothing that he's saying or doing at this point is, is leading me to getting it where I want to be, where I need to be for Ella. <laughs>